asked to really spare time and come here. And I'm feeling so lucky that yes, I'm a gainer after coming here. As far as the conference success is concerned, which has been exhibited by the huge participation and enthusiasm people have shown, my task is to really focus on the basic issue when we are talking about what are the future, what are the challenges into business with the technology. Business we all know, the business of business is to do business, right? That's the, what is the basic thing is. But what is business all about? What business we are into it? As far as economists and people like uh, Professor Ratha are concerned, they will say it is the process of generating wealth and there we stop. No, it is not only. It is the process of generating wealth or creating wealth as per the law of the land and the customs traditions we believe in. These two parts are totally forgotten as far as business is concerned because business and government, they go hand in hand. But the, what is essentially needed for us to understand what type of business we should enter into it and how the technology should come handy to us. Technology per se is a very, very challenging thing to understand and apply. When we say technology, it's not limited to the information technology or ICT we are referring to. This is something which is emerging and which has really encompassed every activity we do because of the digitization, because of the ease in handling, and because of the growth itself or the speed at which things can be executed. But there are technology related to human engineering. How human beings are really kept part of the central stage. If you look into, say, business, whose primacy is being addressed? Are we addressing the stakeholder or the shareholder? It's a big question when it comes to application of technology, adoption of technologies. Most of the time, it is the primacy of shareholder which is kept in focus. And in the process, we lose sight of the complete conservation of environment. Because business processes definitely, they will generate waste. No process is 100% efficient. I recall the teaching of my learned teacher and one of the authority in thermal engineering at Delhi College of Engineering, Professor Saluja, A.K. Saluja. He used to say, machine can be only 100% efficient when it is not working. There are going to be losses, but are we able to focus on those losses or wastes to three-pronged strategy as such when it comes to business? There are business opportunities available. Can we minimize waste? That's the first task. Can we eliminate waste? That could be another task. If not possible, can we reutilize waste? Is, can we come out with the technology which can reutilize waste? And there are different arts which people have been exposed to. Technology per se is something where scientific knowledge being, being utilized for what? For creating tools, processes, product and services for what? For creating a system which is efficient and effective both. Are we able to do that? If we are able to focus on that, people think efficiency and effectiveness are the same thing. No, they are totally different. But of course, they are part of the same coin. They are part of the measurement of the productivity amount. Efficiency comes when, when we are able to optimally use the resources. Means it is something related to the input to the process. Whereas output of the process is the measured by the effectiveness. Means how well it is going to serve the stated purpose or intended purpose or the purpose for which something has been designed, deployed, and developed. This is how, if we are able to really bring about this particular holistic thinking process into it, we will be able to reap benefit of the technology, else it will be more misuse and abuse. What is happening today? How many of us are unnecessarily investing time in so-called social media tools, technologies? Just plot your day and how much productive time has gone into something which may not be relevant for majority of us. Hence, technology per se is not bad. How we are using the technology is going to decide the destiny and destination for all of us. Not taking much time onto this, it is my request to all the learned people here, it is always good to use the technology judiciously. These are designed with a premeditated end in mind, like FEN. I think I just cited this particular example in the previous interaction when I had the opportunity to be here. FEN is designed for what purpose? Hmm? To give us cool breeze, cool air, right? And if it is misused and abused, you will find in lot, lot many newspapers and 
what you call uh, social media, people use this for hanging themselves. Do you think the, the designer has designed this particular fan to, to allow people or to give them an easy tool to commit suicide? It, per se, it is more dependent on how people use it. Another dimension I wish to just focus on, people are taking science, as I said, scientific knowledge. Science is one aspect which basically focuses on more on creation. But who is going to focus on acceptance of that creation? It is the social scientist. So my request, kindly, carry out research in social sciences equally stronger enough so that people are able to accept in the right manner, right fashion for the right purpose, the technology which has been developed by scientists and technologists. It's not only the creation aspect, how we are using or adopting or accepting the technology that is, that is also holding the destiny of the nation as such or the mankind as such. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, Dr. Rath.